Hello, Hawthorne Bears. Welcome to another Esta Mystery. This one is geared probably towards grades three to five. And today's Esta Mystery is called Not Carrot Sticks. You'll see why in a second. Um, as always, if you're interested in Esta Mysteries or Splat, you can find them at this website down here, www.stevewhiteborney.com. I'll also have more of these published on my website, www.mrpythemathguy.com. So let's go ahead and play number detective. So as you can see, we have a glass here and those are not carrot sticks. But I want you to estimate how many carrot sticks or not carrot sticks are in this glass. Go ahead and take a look and use your best estimation skills to estimate how many you think are in there. All right, so how we're, what we're gonna do is, as we're gonna go through a set of clues, and after each clue, you can use the information you've been given to narrow down your guess. I want you to go ahead and write down your first estimate right now. Um, after each clue, you'll be able to see, hey, does my number still make sense? If so, great. If it's no longer possible, write down a new estimate using the information you now have. All right, now to help us out, I am gonna have a hundreds chart that pops up to help us keep track of some of the numbers. So, do you have your number written down? All right, let's go. Let's look at what clue number one is. Clue number one is, the answer is not a multiple of seven. So what is a multiple of seven? What is a multiple? A multiple is basically, it's repeated addition. It's, it's like multiplication, where if you were to add up groups of a certain number, each sum or each total would be a multiple. It's the same thing with multiplication. You could say, well, seven times one is seven. Seven times two is 14. Seven times three is 21. Each of those is a multiple of seven. So we should go through our hundreds chart and cross out anything that's a multiple of seven. Um, you can either do that through your multiplication or you can do it through skip counting by sevens. And if we look at our hundreds chart here, we've been able to eliminate, um, it looks like 14 numbers based on them being a multiple of seven. Was one of those your number? If so, go ahead and make a new estimate based on the information you have. All right, let's go to clue number two. Clue number two says odd or even. Numbers like the one represented by the die on the left are possible, but numbers like the die on the right should be crossed out. So we need to cross out numbers like this. Is this an even or an odd number? That's right, it's an even number. Any number that ends with a two, four, six, eight, or zero is an even number. That means it can be split evenly between two people or two, two groups. Odd numbers end with a one, three, five, seven, or nine. So let's go ahead and cross out our even numbers. Now, did we cross out your guess? If so, it's okay. You have new information. Go ahead and update your guess and uh, use, your, use these first two clues to provide your best estimate now. All right, you have your new estimate written down? Great, let's move on to cl clue number three. Clue number three says the answer does not include the digit represented by the die on the left. So what number is on the left here? That's right, it's a five. So we should eliminate any number that has a five in it. Now that could be a five in the ones place or a five in the tens place. So if we look at the ones place, everything that ends in a five is in one column here. And then we should also get rid of our fifties right here because there's a five in the tens place. So let's go ahead and eliminate those. Did we take out one of your numbers? 
If so, go ahead and update your guess to a new estimate. All right, you have your new estimate. Let's move on to clue number four. Clue number four says, on your chart, there are three remaining numbers between 10 and 18. Find the sum of those numbers and then eliminate the add-ins and the sum. It's a lot of information in this clue, so let's break it down. First of all, the three, remain, the three remaining numbers are 11, 13, and 17. Now it says to find the sum of those numbers. That means we need to add them up. So go ahead, take some time on your end, and add up 11 plus 13 plus 17. All right, did you get your answer? I'll tell you how I added it up. I did 11 plus 13 is 24. Then I broke up 17 like 10 and seven. So I had my 24 plus 10 more makes 34 plus seven more makes 41. Is that what you came up with? Okay. So now the other part of this says, eliminate the add-ins and the sum. The add-ins are the actual numbers we're adding up. And so in this case, we added 11 plus 13 plus 17. So we should eliminate those plus the sum, which is the answer to that addition problem, which was 41. So let's go ahead and cross those out. All right, is your number still there? If so, great. If not, go ahead and uh, adjust your estimate using our new clues or the information you still have. All right, let's move on to clue number five. Clue number five says, find the difference between the two numbers represented by that dice. The answer is not a multiple of that number. Okay, so let's break this one apart. What, is a, what does the difference mean? That's right, a difference is the, the answer to a subtraction problem. If you think in terms of a number line, you have a two and a five, the difference is the distance between two and five. So what is five minus two? That's right, it's three. So we know what the difference is. So the answer is not a multiple of that number. All right, so multiple of three. We need to do like we did on the first clue where we took out multiples of seven. Now we need to take out multiples of three. So we can either skip count, or if you know your three facts pretty good, you can go through and eliminate anything that's a three fact. So go through and look at what we should be taking out. And here's what you should have left. All right, so we are down to 16 numbers. Now technically, just looking at this, I already know that there's more than one here because I can just right here see one, two, three. So I'm not even gonna count one is one of my guesses. But um, if, we have, if we've eliminated your number, go ahead and adjust your estimate based on the information you now have. And we'll move on to clue number six. And for our final clue. The answer does not include the digit seven, or the digit nine. Now again, with this clue, that seven or the nine can appear in either the tens column or the ones column. So we should eliminate anything with the seven or a nine in it. So let's go ahead and eliminate those. All right, that leaves us with six numbers not crossed out. Technically five if we don't include the one. So now, if you need to, go ahead and make one more adjustment to your estimate. Take a look at that glass and think about, okay, here's the numbers we have left. Which of these numbers make sense to represent the number of objects in that glass? Now, now that you've got your number written down, I want you to explain to somebody that's in your room why you chose that number. Again, here's the numbers that are left. Why did you choose the number that you did? Go ahead, I'll give you 10 seconds. All right, did you tell somebody?
You got your final guess? Are you ready? The answer is 43 objects. 43 objects in this class. Great job, number detectives. Um, again, you can always get more of these at stevewyborney.com or um, come back to my website and I'll have more that I walk you through later this week. Again, Bears, I miss you guys. I cannot wait to see you bumps in the classroom again. But in the meantime, go ahead, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll talk to you guys later.